Hello, my name is Valery Rousseau. I'm a physics professor in Worcester, Ohio, and today I'm going to show you how to intelligently solve the six phases of a Rubik's Cube. First of all, let me explain what I mean by intelligently solving the cube. You may have already seen videos in which people solve the six phases of the cube in less than one minute, sometimes without even watching the cube as they solve it. This may look impressive and you may feel frustrated by those geniuses, but let me reassure you, there is actually no genius involved in there. The only thing that these people do is simply to apply formulas that they found somewhere, and which probably most of them don't even understand. So they don't actually solve the cube, they just apply a recipe. It's like doing crosswords by looking at the solution on the back page. It's totally worthless. What I propose today, instead, is to actually solve the cube without the need of knowing any magic formulas that come out of nowhere, but simply by thinking. Of course, as we solve the cube, we will be able to derive our own formulas, but there is absolutely no need to memorize them. You will see that solving the cube is actually very easy provided that you know how to solve one phase. And this is the one condition for understanding the remainder of this tutorial. I assume that you know how to solve one phase of the cube, more precisely, one layer. If you don't, simply spend a few minutes or a few hours on the cube and you should be able to figure out how to solve one layer. All right, let's take a close look at this beautiful cube. It has, with no surprise, six faces, all with different colors, and the hidden face at the bottom is orange. Before we start, we need some definitions. I will call a cubie any element of the cube. It can be a central cubie, in which case the element is identified by its single color, for example, red. Obviously, there are six central cubies, one for each face. There are also 12 edge cubies, each being shared by two faces and, as such, identified by two colors. For example, red-blue. And finally, there are eight corner cubies and, you guessed it, they are shared by three faces and therefore identified by three colors. Red, blue, yellow in the present case. The rotation of a given face by 90 degrees is specified by the color of its central cubie and it will be set positive if the rotation is clockwise and negative if it is counterclockwise. I will denote it by the first letter of its color followed by a positive or negative sign. For example, in the present case, I will say blue positive, yellow negative, red negative, white positive, orange positive, green negative. Let us move back to a fully solved cube. A set of several successive rotations is what I call a sequence. Here is, for example, a sequence that I choose to call S positive and that consists of a rotation blue positive followed by a rotation yellow negative then followed by a rotation red negative. The positive sign that follows the name of the sequence S is meant to differentiate it from the corresponding inverse sequence, which I will call S negative. The inverse sequence S negative, by definition, undoes what the sequence S positive does. Since S positive ends with a rotation red negative, the inverse sequence S negative must start with a rotation red positive. So the inverse sequence is obtained by switching all signs of the original sequence and reading it from right to left. Thus, in the present case, S negative is equal to red positive, yellow positive, blue negative. Something that is crucial to keep in mind when solving the cube is that rotations do not commute in general. This means that, for example, rotating the blue face clockwise, then the red face counterclockwise, 
does not produce the same result as rotating the red face counterclockwise first, then the blue face clockwise. You can see that the results are different. With these definitions, we are now ready to solve the cube. To begin, it is easier to explain the reasoning by starting from a cube that is almost solved. In the present case, we must flip the red-yellow cubie and the red-blue cubie. And the challenge is to do it without messing up the rest of the cube. The idea is to flip the red-yellow cubie and preserve all the other red cubies without minding about the rest of the cube. This is easy as this is a usual step that happens when solving one face of the cube. Once again, I assume that you can solve one face, so you should be able to flip the red-yellow cubie without changing any of the other red cubies. There exist several ways to achieve this and any choice will work as well. In the present case, I choose the following sequence that I call F positive where F stands for flip. The sequence is green negative, blue positive, yellow positive, yellow positive, blue negative, green positive, orange positive, blue positive, green negative, yellow negative, blue negative, green positive. So you see that the red-yellow cubie has been flipped. Of course, by doing so, the rest of the cube is messed up. And the question that arises is how to fix everything. There is a very simple way to do that. Simply apply the inverse sequence. If we do this, everything that was messed up will be restored since the inverse sequence will cancel the original sequence. But then the QB that we just flipped will be flipped again and will end up with the wrong orientation. That's not what we want. However, we want to flip the red-blue QB. So all we have to do is to move the red-blue QB to the position of the red-yellow QB by doing a red-positive rotation. And now, if we apply the inverse of the previous sequence, all the QBs that were messed up will be restored and the red-blue cubie will be flipped. And then, we will only have to put the red-blue cubie back to its initial position by doing a red-negative rotation. Let's do it. The inverse sequence is green-negative, blue-positive, yellow-positive, green-positive, blue-negative, orange-negative, green-negative blue positive, yellow negative, yellow negative, blue negative, green positive, and we finish with red negative. It's a child's play. To conclude this first part, we saw how two edge cubies can be flipped without modifying their positions and without messing up the rest of the cube. This allowed us to derive the formula that appears at the bottom. In the next part, we will see how to exchange the positions of 4H cubies.